on the set behind the scenes, mm. I was auntie, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. And thank you. I didn't know I raised you. <laughs> but I was, you know, when I get out, everybody's like, I grew up watching you on TV. And yeah. it was like, wow. Yeah. Okay. Get the memo. <laughs> I'm so excited to be here with all the aunties. Mm. But Wendy, I have to admit, growing up, oh. I loved seeing you <laughs> on the Steve Harvey show, oh. all your various roles. You mm -hmm. really got to be all the things. You got to be boss lady, but you still mm. got to be vulnerable. You mm. still got to be you know, Ooh. goofy, you still yeah. gotta be serious. Yeah. Oh my you God. know, we love to see she it. She was an yes. orchestra. Right, so she in was. a sense, like you were an auntie figure to me, just wow. seeing that representation on TV. I had no idea I'd be like the auntie, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, <laughs> there, there were all of the kids that yeah. were on the show and on the set behind the scenes, I was auntie, mm -hmm. you know, because mm -hmm. I was a little, just a little bit older, but uh, <laughs> older than the kids that were on the show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then, you know, with all of the adults, with me and Sid and Terry, it was just magical, you know? And thank you, I didn't know I raised you. <laughs> but, 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 but you know, when I get out, everybody's like, I grew up watching you on TV. And it was like, wow. Yeah. So I guess the stories that we told and the roles that we played really had a, um, I'm gonna say had an indelible impression mm -hmm. on so many mm -hmm. young people. And it look did. at you, it you're does. a PhD now. Okay? So I guess I did well. I guess this auntie yeah. did well, darling. <laughs> Have you always embraced that title of auntie? Like for me, it depends on the context. Like right. sometimes right. people right. say it as like a slight, like, mm. like you're okay, older. Auntie. Mm -hmm. Okay, auntie. Right, 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 right. But I've always loved being auntie. But I, I aspire to be the rich auntie specifically. Mm. Right, right, right. Mm. Come on up, come on up there with us. Come on up there. I think the thing that changed my mind, because I, it is true that sometimes there's this essence of older, and you're mm -hmm. like, wait, I don't want to claim that. Even though I think getting older is very sexy, yeah, yeah. there's a lot of academic work around the language of other mother. Yep. You know, mm, the like person that. who isn't the mother, but they're doing very maternal things to yeah. care for, to nurture, to be in the life of other people. And and I think that that is so true to black culture. It's so true to indigenous cultures where there is a village of people who are yes. caring for. I mean, we can think of, I remember going outside and playing and another woman who lived down the street oh, saying, yeah. aren't you supposed to be home? Exactly. Aren't you supposed exactly. to be home right now? Exactly. And it wasn't even that she had a conversation yes. with my mother, but she saw herself as an other mother who was there to ensure that I was where I was supposed to be, that I was safe, yes. that I was well. Mm -hmm. And in the church, we have these mm -hmm. other mothers. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's, it's very true to our communities in mm -hmm. ways that capitalist, individualistic, you know, patriarchal spaces don't. And our, you know, our matriarchal lineages, as they showed up over time, over history, has proven that motherhood isn't just in the birthing mother, right. that there is an Absolutely. other yeah. mother. Um, and standing we show up, gap. we show up. Yeah, yeah standing always in the gap. standing in the gap, yeah. I was in uh, Lome, Togo in West Africa and I was getting my hair braided and a little girl came up to me. Uh, she was maybe three years old and she says, auntie, can I have some water? Yeah. And I have never seen this girl before, obviously. Right, right. And I was deeply moved by the fact that she saw a black woman older than her and she, sh she had every confidence that I would care for her. Wow. And it completely changed my perspective on yeah. what it means to be an auntie, that yes. it has more to do with who trusts me, yeah. with who I get to care for yeah. with how I get to show up and yes. even outside of my personal decision not to have children mm -hmm. this opportunity to um, be there as a space as a perhaps safe space mm -hmm. as a new space as an exciting space and it's that way for lots of indigenous cultures lots Absolutely. of um, cultures mm -hmm. across Absolutely. the diaspora yeah. in in Jamaica there's no older woman who isn't called auntie whatever yeah, regardless of how mm -hmm. she's mm -hmm. um, related and so I, I see it as a um, not just a title, but like a solid space in the community that I have yeah, a lot of pride mm -hmm. in yeah, taking taking up space. Since I started my show, Your Favorite Auntie, people just call me auntie. Mm -hmm. Like, they don't call me my, my name anymore. <laughs> yeah. I'll be at a party, you know, <laughs> right. looking cute, whatever. And they'll be like, hey, auntie. And I'm like, hey, how are you? Yeah. Because I feel like an auntie to the kids in my industry. Yeah. I've, mm. you know, I've been working in fashion forever. I feel like I have a lot to offer to give back. Mm -hmm. And so I'm willing to do that. And mm -hmm. I think like you're saying, it's like, 
being an auntie is a powerful position, and like, it really and you, it, mm-hmm. it's about trust. It is. So I, I take it as a huge honor, and I, I'm literally a auntie to my nieces and yeah. my nephews. Mm-hmm. So it's, yeah. it's, it's impacted me in a lot of ways. Yeah. I, I own it. I claim it. Yeah. So of course we're all aunties now, but I'm curious to know about the aunties that shaped you growing up. And like, what were some of the traits that they embody that maybe even influences who you are now? Look, I, I brought my Auntie Gail with me. Actually, no, she gave me this sweater. And yeah. um, she was the first auntie, or the first person ever to take me to, to the theater. Yeah. So I went to see The Wiz when I was like eight years old and I saw Stephanie Mills on stage. I was oh like, that's God. what I want to do. Yes. And it was my auntie. She's been the more eccentric one in the family. She had a son, mm-hmm. but I feel like I was her special daughter. Mm-hmm. Every Christmas, mm-hmm. it was like, auntie, what is this? Yes. She would come with the best gifts that were always, it wasn't anything you could play with. It was something you had to investigate mm-hmm. and learn about, you know, even from the bath oils and just, you know, just everything. So I think she just opened me up to a whole nother level of, um, of the world. Yeah. Just being bigger than what I had imagined before. I remember a woman who I was so mesmerized by. She was at our church. The one thing I remember is her hands were so soft. And I remember mm. thinking, you must be so well rested mm, yeah. that your hands <laughs> are not doing labor. I they feel they were so I know what her hands feel like. Yeah, yeah. They were so soft. And I remember my mother telling me that she didn't have children. And I was just mm. like, wow, well, what is she doing with her days? When I, when, you know, as a child, I thought, about this, you know, life escalator of you graduate, you get married, you have kids, and it felt inevitable. But when I saw this woman who didn't have kids and she seemed so happy and Mm. had so much to give to the church, which was the community we were in at the time, it was the first thing that made me think, oh, what else is possible? How else might I exist in this world? And so while I didn't have a personal relationship with her outside of her, us being happy to see each other in the sanctuary every Sunday, I began to think a bit more critically about who I could be in the world, what other right. options and possibilities I might have, and she really, she really yeah. inspired me. In Let that me way. see your hand. Mm-hmm. Right. Oh, they stop! No, but they are. I know. I completely agree with you. I think the women, the aunties I had. My mother had a beautiful sister. My father has had a beautiful um, sister, and I think that they just were representations of how to live life on your own terms. Mm-hmm. I right. think for women That's especially, true. there's so many ways of how you're supposed to live your life, and they were so independent. They were so headstrong, and but they were also really nurturing. Yeah. And I remember like when they shone their light on you, it was kind of like being in the sun, and you just felt so warm, mm-hmm. and you're just like, oh my gosh, I love you so much. Yeah. Yeah. Because they are not as authoritative as a mother, and they're right. not as infantilizing as a big sis. Mm-hmm. They are there to be your confidant and yes. advocate for you. Mm-hmm. And, you know, because they're adult figures, they have mm-hmm. they have sway. Right. So when your parents right. aren't hearing right. you, right. You, you can be heard. And it's, I, I, I really respect them so much for that. And that's the type of auntie that I wanted to be mm-hmm. to my babies. How we show up for one another is probably my favorite part about being a black woman. And like one of the main reasons why I wouldn't change that for the world, because I, I consider it like a privilege to be able to show up for other people. And I just think about all the opportunities I've gotten, all the advice I've received, and it's, it's always pretty much been from a black woman guiding me. So there's something in us that just makes sure that we are all all right, even if it's just like, you got something in your hair. Yeah, right, yeah. Right. yeah, yeah, yeah. Fix, your fix that little button. You know, <laughs> you know, but in that, and we've all kind of reflected on who those people were or who we hope to be, um, but what is that thing that you hope to leave mm. with the next generation with those mm-hmm. people who you are an auntie with. I mean, we're aunties to all types of people in all types of ways already. I don't know. I feel like I would love for black kids who are trying to get into fashion to know that they can do a lot with their with their opportunity there. Yeah. And they can do a lot with their pen and they can bring people in and that they should feel like they belong there. Yeah. I see it in so many of my young people, you know, they're I don't even want to say their self-esteem, but it's also their um, their outlook sometimes. It, it, it gets a little heavy because yeah. they're growing up in a time, yeah. you know, I didn't have social media. I was yeah. bullied to death. But now, you know, there's social media that just berates them and mm-hmm. beats them down. Yeah. And it's like, show up for yourself. Mm-hmm. Show up for yourself first. 
And then the other thing I want to tell them, just be kind. Yes. Be kind. Kindness goes a long way. Now, don't be no fool, right? Mm -hmm. but be kind. Yeah. I think a big part of my purpose is reminding black women what we deserve. Mm -hmm. I have a foundation called the Loveland Foundation. We provide um, free access to therapy for black women and girls across the country. And I did that out of my own experience of going yeah. to therapy and saying, mm -hmm. wow, I have this lightness. I have this feeling of being seen. I have this opportunity to work through trauma that I thought was holding me down for life. And I, I feel very compelled to live a life that represents the type yeah. of ease and softness and abundance and opportunity. I'm Amanda and I'm black and a woman and unapologetically myself and courageous and fearless and an auntie. My name is Rachel. I'm black. I'm a woman. I am curious. I'm excited. I'm well rested and I'm an auntie. I am Wendy, I am black, I am a woman, I am eccentric, I am me, and I'm an auntie. I'm Marjan, I'm black, I'm a woman, I'm a friend, I'm a thinker, I'm a lover, 